The launch vehicle for AS-202 was also developed by Chrysler, Douglas, and IBM under the management of Marshall. Flight objectives were to demonstrate the structural integrity and compatibility of the launch vehicle and spacecraft and confirm launch loads, to verify operation of the launch vehicle's propulsion, guidance and control, and electrical systems, evaluate the vehicle's emergency detection system, which was flown in closed loop for the first time, and also verify the spacecraft systems and command module heat shield at high heat load during reentry. S-1B-2 post-static checkout began October 4th at Chrysler Michou and was completed in mid-November. Following completion of preparations for shipment, the stage will remain at Michou until scheduled shipment to the Cape late January. Following post-static checkout, the booster for the third flight vehicle, SA-202, was shipped from Chrysler's Michou assembly facility to the Cape February 7th. Immediately after launch complex 34 pad refurbishment, the stage was erected on March 4th. On November 9th at Douglas's SACTO facility, the second attempt to accept and fire S-4B202, located in beta stand number three, was made. After 307 seconds of main stage burning, the firing was automatically terminated due to problems within the liquid hydrogen mass sensing system. The problem was corrected, but during countdown for the next attempt, a battery subsystem malfunctioned, terminating the countdown. On December 1st, the stage was successfully accept-inspired, indicating successful solution to all the problems encountered. At Douglas's SACTO facility, post-static checkout of the second stage was completed January 6th. The stage was shipped from SACTO by ocean vessel January 15th and was offloaded at the Cape January 29th. It was then moved to the vertical assembly building for inspection and storage. The stage was stacked atop the booster March 9th. At IBM Huntsville, SIU-202 assembly started last quarter was completed in mid-December. Checkout began immediately with completion planned for early February. Installation of components in the instrument unit for the second flight vehicle was completed on February 23rd and checkout began the next day. The modules for spacecraft 011 for the second unmanned Apollo mission were in final systems installation before entering acceptance testing. The modules were shipped to Cape Kennedy in April 1966. The second Apollo Saturn mission will be flown with unmanned spacecraft 011. The spacecraft entered final systems checkout at Cape Kennedy in preparation for mating to its uprated Saturn I launch vehicle early in the next reporting period. Following completion of vehicle erection at Launch Complex 34 last quarter, SA-202 continued in pre-flight checkout throughout the report period. AS-202 launch is planned for next quarter. Its mission will be to launch the Apollo spacecraft into suborbital flight, ending in the Pacific Ocean near Wake Island. During re-entry, the spacecraft ablative heat shield will be tested under the high heat loads of re-entry. Early on the morning of August 25th, final phases of terminal countdown began in preparation for the suborbital flight of AS-202. After a 45-minute delay due to a programming problem on a downrange tracking ship, Apollo Saturn 202 was launched at 12.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Ten seconds after liftoff, the vehicle began its programmed maneuvers. Following a first stage burn time of two minutes and 23 seconds, the second stage ignited, and 23 seconds later, the launch escape system jettisoned. An onboard camera recorded separation and second stage ignition. The J2 engine performed satisfactorily. Overall data indicated good vehicle performance. The emergency detection system closed loop, operational for the first time, performed as planned. A 
a flight plan called for AS-202 to be launched from the Cape on a flight azimuth of 105 degrees. The spacecraft was to reach its apogee over the east coast of South Africa. The command module was to re-enter over the Pacific Ocean about 235 statute miles east-southeast of Wake Island with a total planned flight time of one hour and 33 minutes. After separation from the Saturn launch vehicle, a 215-second burn by the service propulsion system boosted the spacecraft to a peak altitude of 660 nautical miles. A second burn of 85 seconds by the main engine placed the spacecraft into a high-heat atmosphere entry position. Two more firings of the service propulsion system of three seconds each were made primarily to test the engine's restart capability when propellant supply is low. This was the first flight for the fuel cell system, the unified S-band system, and the Apollo guidance and navigation system, which controlled the engine firings and modulated the lift vector for controlled entry. Spacecraft re-entry, photographed by a camera aboard the command module, was as planned. The long duration entry reaching a velocity of almost 19,000 miles per hour subjected the heat shield to heat loads of approximately 20,000 BTUs per square foot. The maximum surface temperature was about 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. The Earth landing sequences, including the deployment and main parachute, were also successful. The command module landed southwest of the planned impact point. Search aircraft located it and pararescue swimmers attached the flotation collar. Several hours later, the USS Hornet arrived and recovered the command module in good condition. Data acquired showed good vehicle performance. 